All right, let's go ahead and dig into Produce Spotlight today. We started this month off last week with Crystal in our, what I'm gonna call like color group um, series of Produce Spotlight. She chatted all about red produce last week. And today I'm going to be talking about yellow and orange, hence my one and only yellow shirt that I pulled out uh, for today as we talk about um, all of the great nutrients and health benefits with yellow and orange vegetables. Um, now, I'm not going to be making anything today, but instead we're going to be really going into the nutrition behind uh, the yellow and orange produce, but I am still going to be giving some recipe inspiration along the way. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and we will get started here. Can somebody please let me know if you see my screen? That would be great. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. So, what is the scoop about? Uh, hold on, guys. Just letting some more folks in here. Um, what's the scoop about yellow and orange produce? Why are they so colorful? What gives yellow and orange? fruits and vegetables, that beautiful yellow and orange color, okay? The main thing that is responsible for the color of these fruits and vegetables is the pigment of carotenoids, okay? Not only are carotenoids the pigment itself that's giving these fruits and vegetables the color, but they are also a very vital nutrient as well that give our um, yellow and orange produce, the nutrition that they have, okay? So some background about carotenoids here. There's two different types, okay? You have some that um, contain oxygen, and those are the ones that are going to be giving us the yellow pigment. So things that contain zeaxanthin and lutein are ones that have oxygen um, carotenoids in them and provide that yellow color. Whereas the other type of carotenoid, your carotenes, would be beta carotene as well as lycopene, okay? Beta carotene is going to be responsible for the orange hue, where lycopene is going to be more of that red and pink. So today we're going to focus mainly on the beta carotene, the zeaxanthin, and the lutein, um, because we're focused, once again, on the yellow and orange, where lycopene was a little bit more about um, what Crystal did last week with the red. Okay, so because of those different nutrients that we just talked about, um, these are some general health benefits that you're going to see me highlight throughout um, talking about the orange and yellow fruits and vegetables, okay? So a high level view of nutrition um, is that they're going to provide benefits for our eye health, our immune health, skin, as well as brain health, okay? So if you take away anything from today, it would be that yellow and orange fruits and vegetables help our eyes, help our immune system, our skin, and our brain. Okay, which we'll dig into further as we go along here. So first up, let's talk about that beta carotene. Remember the beta carotene is the carotenoid that provides the orange color, okay? Uh, a lot of times, whether you've heard it from us or someone else, um, we think about beta carotene in our eyes. And why is that? Let's break that down, okay? So beta carotene is an antioxidant. And we throw, a word the, uh, we throw around the word antioxidant a lot, but what does that really mean? And especially when it comes to our eye health is that our body produces free radicals for different reasons. And when we have large amounts of these free radicals in our body, we go into a state of having a lot of inflammation, okay? So antioxidants help battle that. So antioxidants, are great for eye health, great for other types of diseases, and most notably um, with cancer as well, okay? But today, in the way of beta-carotene and it being an antioxidant, we're specifically talking about how 
beta carotene in the body um, is converted to vitamin A. And vitamin A is that nutrient that's really essential to our eye health, okay? In particular, um, with beta carotene, the big connection is that age-related macular degeneration, which is essentially a really big word for when things start to become blurry or fuzzy as we age, okay? So having a diet rich in beta carotene can help with um, the reduction of that. Some studies have actually noted that folks who have a diet that are that high in beta carotene um, can actually re potentially reduce the risk of age-related macular degeneration by about 35%. So it is very significant, that beta carotene, okay? Now, with that said, there is also some research that doing a lot of beta carotene can actually have some not great effects um, on the eyes for those who are smokers, okay? So there is some sort of odd connection between beta carotene and smoking, so um, if you're ever thinking about supplementing with beta carotene in particular, and you are a smoker, that is definitely something that you would want to um, discuss with your doctor ahead of time, okay? Um, beyond eye health, which is what's most notable, like I said, with beta carotene, it can also potentially help with our brain and cognition. Specifically, there's been studies done with Alzheimer's and things of that nature and then also protecting our skin. So what are some beta carotene rich foods? Number one up there, well, number one and number two really that I think our minds go to would be carrots and sweet potatoes, but also similar to that, your butternut squash, which I love butternut squash, especially in the fall. And then we can't forget about, about some other good ones, cantaloupe and apricots. Um, and I also love apricots very much. I think that they are a great one. So let's talk about some inspiration. Now that we know we want to have more of them, what can we do to incorporate them into our diet besides just eating you know, carrots and cantaloupe as it is? Um, here is a recipe for a carrot hummus um, from our savory collection. So it is simply making your own homemade hummus with a base of carrots. I will say that I myself have not made this one before, but we have carried carrot hummuses in the store before and they were always amazing. So I would definitely recommend trying this one out. I'm gonna try to click on the link and see if it goes there. Okay, can you guys still see this or is it just showing the PowerPoint? Can you see the recipe on savory right now? No, Rhett, you do see it. No, you can't. Okay, all right, that's fine. Let me um, stop sharing my screen. And, or here, I'll do it this way. Okay, how about now? Can you see the recipe now? No, we still can't see it. Okay, all right, hold on guys, sorry. Ooh, let's uh, stop share. Hold on guys, we'll do it this way. You can see the savory page, but you couldn't see, oh, now you can. Okay, here we go, let's do it like this. Okay, so you can see the savory page right now. And then if I scroll down here, here is the recipe, okay? Oh, you could see the savory page is not the actual recipe. Got it, got it, okay. So um, here is the recipe. This one does come along with a video if you would prefer to check it out um, that way. But as we scroll down here, um, you'll see that this is one of our recipes that earns guiding stars. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard us talk and talk and talk about Guiding Stars, but if not, Guiding Stars is a way to help you navigate both the grocery store and our recipes a little bit better. 
So if something earns one star, it's good, two stars, it's better, and three stars, it's best. So a lot of the, our recipes on savory are rated to help you know that you're making a good choice with the recipe. So this one is simply just a mix of carrots and then um, some typical items that you usually would put into hummus. And I just think it sounds really fun. I think to jazz this up, I would actually add a dash or two of sriracha. Um, but yeah, definitely something that you could give a go at home. Okay, so a great one to get in that beta carotene. Okay, let's go back now to our presentation. Okay, so now my presentation should be pulled back up and we are on a slide about the axithin. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the axithin um, is going to be one of those carotenoids that gives our pigments to yellow fruits and vegetables. Once again, associated with eye health, but a little bit further detail with that is that the axithin is going to be one of the molecules that's actually in the cells of our eyes, okay? So if you can see here um, with this picture that here in the back of the eye, um, we're going to have both zeaxithin and lutein is going to be in the macula there of our eye, okay, in those cells. And similar to beta carotene, it has that antioxidant function as well as the anti-inflammatory function, giving us those antioxidants to help fight some of the inflammation. And that inflammation um, is once again being related to the age-related macular degeneration as well as things like glaucoma, which is going to be um, a partial or then complete loss of vision, and then cataracts where things start to look cloudy, okay? Um, in the way of skin protection, zeaxithin is specifically related to potentially helping um, with uh, your skin aging. So when it comes to wrinkles and elasticity, um, zeaxithin is something that can potentially be helpful for that. And then very similar to the beta carotene, also going to help with brain and um, cognition health as well. So what foods are going to be high in zeaxithin? Um, summer squash in particular, pumpkin, even though it's a little bit more orange, is still going to have that in there as well. And same with carrot, okay? Some inspiration here. I will go to our next recipe. This one I think um, just sounds really great. It looks really great to me anyway. Um, let me find it up top here. Our grilled uh, summer squash and bruschetta. I love bruschetta in general. I just, mm, I love bruschetta. Um, so this is a fun different take on it. Once again, a guiding star rated recipe. It's one star where you are um, grilling up the summer squash and then doing it on a baguette with some pesto. So um, I know it's only uh, February and here I am talking about summer squash and whatnot, but I'm ready. I'm ready for the season. And I think that this one sounds like a really great one there. Okay, and back to our presentation. Next up is lutein. Lutein is um, the other one with zeaxithin that's going to give that yellow pigmentation. Um, and I like to say that lutein is buddies with the zeaxithin in the eye, right? Just that last picture that we saw, they kind of hang out together in the back of the eye. Same thing with the age-related macular degeneration, the glaucoma, but then also some potential connection with diabetic retinopathy, as well as at the other end of the life spectrum um, with fetal eye development. So um, with a baby's eye development, when um, they're still in their mama, um, that lutein could potentially help with their eye development. 
And then also dry eye. If you suffer a lot from dry eye, more lutein could potentially help. Um, once again, another one that's helpful with brain health and cognition, um, but something a little bit new here on our side also with heart health. So here we are in February, heart health month. There have been some studies to show that lutein um, can potentially help with lowering both cholesterol and triglycerides. So where is lutein found in terms of yellow foods? In the way of fruits and vegetables, it's actually most dominant in corn, um, yellow corn. Um, outside of that, eggs are actually the really big source of lutein, but we're in produce spotlight today. We're not talking about eggs. Um, so yellow corn, and I think that corn can get a really bad reputation whenever it doesn't have to, right? Yes, corn is a carbohydrate, um, but our body still needs carbs. It's all just a matter of that moderation that we talk about all the time, okay? So here is some recipe inspiration with just, rather than just doing the simple corn on the cob, we have a grilled steak with corn salsa. This to me, I think um, also just looks amazing. We'll pull up the recipe for uh, that one here. All right, let me see, here it is. So here is our grilled steak with corn salsa. It's one guiding star, it features London broil. Um, I see the question, do the yellow tomatoes also have lutein? Um, I didn't look that up specifically, but I want to say yes from prior research that I've done on yellow tomatoes because I love yellow tomatoes. Um, I've actually, I, I know you'll ask for the recipe, so I'll need to find it, but I've actually made a yellow tomato gazpacho, um, which is lovely. So yellow tomatoes, I'm a big fan of. So I would say that they most likely do, but I would have to double check on that one for you. Um, so here is that recipe. Once again, it's a featuring London broil steak and then that corn salsa um, with the corn and the grape tomatoes. Um, as you can tell, once again, I'm so ready for summer. I just think that this looks fantastic. Okay. When a bell pepper ripens from yellow to orange to red, is the kind of carotenoid changing as it goes? So um, that's a really good question. And um, I don't know that I would say that it's changing in terms of um, the carotenoids potentially as much as it is vitamin C. I would have to double check on the carotenoids. I mean, that kind of does make sense that it might be. Um, let me look into that. But we're going to talk about vitamin C in a minute, particularly with bell peppers. And um, they all do have varying amounts of vitamin C because of their color. So it might be related to that as well. I need to check into that. Okay. Go back to our... PowerPoint here. I know guys, I'm like sharing and unsharing as we go. Um, so here we are with vitamin C. And if you guys were along with us last month, we talked a lot about different types of produce that can help um, with our immune system. And when we think about our immune system, we often think about vitamin C. So what is that connection there? And the connection with vitamin C and our immune health is that um, I like to think of vitamin C as being our bodyguard, okay? Vitamin C helps keep our tissues um, healthy. And whenever our tissues are healthy, then that can help protect our body from germs and viruses and things of that nature, okay? So vitamin C is protecting our whole body. It's our bodyguard by the sense that it's helping our tissues stay healthy. So a lot of our yellow and orange um, fruits and vegetables contain vitamin C. So the first one I have up here actually is bell peppers, okay? So in the spectrum of bell peppers, the highest amount of vitamin C is going to be um, orange, followed by red, 
and then yellow, and then green being the least. Super good question though about the carotenoids and how they change and the colors that are in them. So, I mean, the more I think about it, I do logically think that it's probably going to, you know, affect the amount of carotenoids in each one and the concentrations of those, but I wanna look that up um, to give you a better um, answer on that one. But the vitamin C definitely does change among them um, as they go to color to color. Other foods that are going to be high in vitamin C that are in that yellow and orange category, of course, are citrus fruits. So everything from oranges to tangerines to lemons. Um, and then next there we have cantaloupe and mangoes. Mangoes are also a good source of vitamin C. So our inspiration here, um, I kind of wanted to um, bring to light to you guys some things that the dietitians are doing outside of our classes, and that is that we've been engaged in a lot of different media segments. So if you are from the PA area, um, our news station um, around here is ABC 27. And um, during the week on ABC 27, they have something called Good Day PA. Um, so it's kind of like a talk show almost in a way. Um, and um, they have different people come on from people like us to musicians to other just fun things in the community that people want to spotlight. Okay. And so right now, some of us have been involved in some, some segments with Good Day PA. Um, for example, last week, Jenna was on doing some um, Valentine's Day stuff for kids. So even though that was last week, you can go onto their website and um, check out her segment. Next uh, week, Joni is going to be on. Um, she's going to be talking about how to build a balanced plate within your budget. And then the reason that I'm bringing this up and, and how it's connected today is because then um, these are all uh, pre-recorded. We already recorded all of these. And in March, mine will be on. Um, I see, do you know what time it's on? They're all on at 10 o'clock. Okay, 10 o'clock. Um, in March, on March 9th, mine will be on. And I'm talking about um, mood boosting food. Uh, one of those things being salmon. So here I made some salmon tacos and I've chopped them off with some mango salsa. So that's our recipe inspiration for vitamin C and, um, and mangoes is that, um, I know it's kind of blurred in the background here, but we carry a mango salsa that is delicious. Um, 10 a.m., okay, 10 a.m., um, we carry a mango salsa in our produce section. That's really great. It's a great topper for a lot of things, but um, I showcased it here on the salmon tacos that I made. So that could just be a fun and different way to get in some vitamin C. Okay. And then um, Crystal will be on at the end of March. She's going to be talking about some Easter side dishes. Do you know why there is not a significant amount of vitamin C in lemonade? I looked at the nutrition label recently and was surprised that it was not that much. That's because most of your commercial lemonades are going to be more water and sugar than they are lemon juice. Um, if you want a lemonade that's going to be higher in vitamin C, then I would suggest um, checking out one that's going to be a little bit more natural and containing more lemon juice or something that I like to do is just making my own. And that way, you know that you can put a lot more lemon and lemon juice in it. Um, but that's typically why is because a lot of it's going to be diluted with just water and sugar. Um, and then last up, oops, hold on, guys. Ah, hold on. Let me share my screen again. I don't know what happened there. Um, the last one I wanted to show you for some recipe inspiration here um, are these tropical pancakes, okay? And this was another thing that I wanted to chat about that um, we as a team do. We have a pretty strong um, 
spotlight on Giant's Instagram as well as Facebook pages. So if you are into social media, definitely out of the two, particularly, we have a stronger presence on Instagram. Um, and coming up in March for Frozen Food Month, I did a, a whole little recording on using frozen produce. And I did some frozen mango here and made um, some pancakes. It's simply just our pre-made pancake mix so that you just add water to. Made some pancakes, topped it off. Um, with some frozen mango while they were actually cooking and then more at the end and a little bit of coconut. So lots of easy ways to use mango, whether it be fresh mango or the mango in our salsa. I love the frozen mango to keep on hand, great in smoothies. Um, so I'm a big fan of frozen, especially frozen fruits and trying to use them in different ways, okay? So once again, be on the lookout for ABC 27 segments from us and then follow us on Instagram or Facebook to get some more um, recipe ideas, okay? But that is what we have for you guys today in the way of yellow and orange produce. Thank you for hopping on. I'm gonna stop the recording um, now, but if anybody has,